Joining me now is Amir Khan, Manager and Director and Global Head of Private Equity at Unicorn Investment Bank. Amir, welcome. Thank you. How big is private equity in Islamic finance? The numbers are somewhat uh, non-traditionally accumulated in this industry. However, we believe that uh, private equity industry is at least three to four billion dollars uh, overall. Uh, there are some very well-established companies who have been doing private equity for a while, such as our capita and others, uh, is primarily in the U.S., which have utilized Islamic uh, uh, structures. Uh, at that level, we think it's about two to three billion that they, they should have invested the equity money. Uh, plus, uh, Unicorn itself uh, has done about $400 million worth of uh, Islamic private equity, both in the West and locally in the GCC countries. So that's, uh, that's how you can kind of back into this data. And what are the big differences between conventional private equity and Islamic private equity? Primarily, though, it all boils down to the structure of the transaction. Because again, uh, some of the criteria used uh, to, to select private equity investments is essentially the same. Uh, we utilize the, uh, let's say, the filter process being that the, the company has to be in an, in an industry which is growing uh, somewhat sustainable level of growth of 10, 15, 20 percent. Uh, it has fairly solid cash flows coming out of those investments. Uh, the management team has to be reasonably well established so we don't go into the restructuring uh, kind of companies and therefore the criteria to select key investments again in both conventional private or Islamic private equity is essentially the same however when you start structuring their capital structure that's where we see noticeable difference meaning uh, not only conservative uh, leverage in the transactions that uh, Islamic private equity industry uh, actually accepts and follows. But How much leverage are you, are you allowed? Well, different school of thought somewhat differ a little bit. Uh, you can use uh, debt to equity ratio or debt to asset ratio. Uh, typically, it's about 33, 34 percent of debt to assets. Um, and then sometimes the assets are defined as market value of those assets. Um, and therefore, you kind of have to adjust for valuation uh, sort of nuances within the, within the company and the industry it's, it's in. So especially in terms of more industrialized manufacturing companies, you have a very solid EBITDA is what we define in the industry. However, in technology companies, you will take a sales ratio to, uh, to the valuation. Um, therefore, we, um, again, so some of the differences in the capital structuring is essentially conservative leverage, which now seems to be the trend that everybody wants to follow. Uh, there's also no liquidation preference in Islamic uh, equity. There's also no preferred stocks uh, in Islamic private equity, which are very much the traditional way of structuring companies in, uh, in the conventional private equity world. How much is the liquidity squeeze affecting the industry, particularly in the GCC? Right. It's, uh, it's a fairly relevant question, but I believe that we have not seen deals not happening because of liquidity. Uh, again, you have to understand the, the nature of PE industry in the Middle East is somewhat different from the West, uh, whereas the PE industry has evolved from family businesses uh, trying to sell a stake in their company. So they are, even though they are attracted by some of the cash that they can partially divest and, and take some chips off the table, but that's not the main uh, driver. So therefore, even in transactions which are done in the, in the GCC, there is a lot more equity investment than debt investment. So the liquidity crunch has slowed the business down, and of course the valuations have come down from the business cycle, less from uh, the liquidity, uh, so to speak, cycle. So therefore we don't see a huge shift because of liquidity, it's just a normal business cycle that some sellers don't like the current valuations and they're holding back. Uh, whereas some sellers are still trying to say, well, this is the right time for me to bring on a partner who can add to the management strength and the expansion plans that they have in place. In the developed world, uh, obviously, the rates of return are driven to a large extent by, by leverage. Certainly, okay. G given, given the leverage constraints in, in the Islamic finance right. world, right. Uh, how, how hard is it to, to drive rates of return and, and, and what are the, the biggest drivers? Okay. Sure. Um, you're right. I mean, I think if you go back about 20 years ago, even in the U.S., uh, private equity uh, 
investments were not heavily leveraged. Um, so we have somewhat tilted the, the capital structure more recently, let's say in the last five years or so, where more uh, PE investments in the West were made by heavily leveraging those investments. Um, in the GCC, we are still somewhat operating in a more classical private equity model where leverage is not ultimate driver. However, where we think uh, the returns in the GCC will come from is actually buying from network, which is individual network of uh, people running these firms. Uh, their trust and uh, comfort factor with the families who are selling the businesses. Uh, those valuations are not somewhat driven by an auction process, which is much more prevalent in the West. Uh, this is much more driven by relationships, by trust, by confidence, uh, and therefore you can get the companies at reasonably priced valuations. And even in this cycle, probably a little lower uh, valuation, and therefore when you exit, uh, since you are coming in at a lower valuation, the upside potential is really driven by the, the true value add. Uh, functionality within the companies. Mm. I mean, obviously, exit is is key for any private in equity investor before they even do the uh, the investment. How challenging is is the exit strategy in again in in, in GCC, GCC, especially yeah. given the volatile nature of the capital markets? Mm. Well, GCC traditionally did not really look for exits from the ca or exits to the capital markets. Um, it was a bit misnomer that that's how the exits were being planned. I think uh, when the story was sold to a seller, uh, it was a little more long term than what it was perceived to be. So in terms of the way uh, the exits, I think, are going to work in the future, first of all, the time cycle of exit will increase. People were still thinking they were investing in private equity but wanted a return or exit back in two years in a maximum of three. Now, as we all know, private equity doesn't work that way. You have to invest at least five years or so, if not five and seven years at times, um, before you can really drive the value from this company. So I think that from that point of view, the cycle goes back to what was happening in the Western world before. You'll have those durations longer, so the exit will be stretched a bit longer. Uh, plus, there will be, I think, more international trade buyers of these companies. Just because the GCC is now part of the WTO, they have to open up the economies. Um, currently, the way the structure of these companies is set up, most families have these agency relationships uh, where the manufacturing is done somewhere else, and they are much more, they're, they're basically the agents of those companies. Now, since these companies or these sellers or family businesses have a platform, they can capitalize on the distribution angle and don't have to be exclusive to, a, to any one of the firms. So I think what will happen essentially is some of these international trade buyers will see the opening up of these markets and they will be ultimate buyers of these companies where they can then deliver a higher multiple and valuation to the ultimate sellers of this business. So we will be relying much less on IPOs, uh, but I think a lot more on trade buyers in the sectors. In, in the West, private equity has aroused a great deal of controversy. Um, Number of number of private equity firms have, have uh, had negative uh, comments written about them because of the potential consequences of, of the restructuring of their of their investments. Mm. Uh, how, how is private equity perceived in the Middle East? Yeah, I think, uh, and this is my belief. Fortunately, and I'm a fairly active participant in this industry, so fortunately, it's still um, viewed as a value add player, a private equity house. Now you have to understand that private equity for a long time was conducted in the Middle East, but not as an institutional money, but much more club of friends, family members contributing some. So they've been used to this private equity concept. A just institutional concept is new to the region. Uh, but as I said, fortunately we are still in this period where the expertise and the knowledge of PE players uh, are the ones which uh, are the most in demand by some of the family groups. And again, we have just in the UAE, I was reading a survey, there are at least 180 conglomerates just in the UAE, which will be needing uh, some sort of equity injection plus this advisory work that kind of comes because of the ownership of PE houses. Uh, so there's still a, a window of opportunity to at least do a little, little more classic private equity than just do financial engineering, for example, which is getting the bad rapport in the West. I'm a calm.
Thank you very much for your time.